Good morning. It's a very early morning here on the allotment. Um, I wanted to get up here and do a few bits and bobs. The observant among you will have noticed there's been a few subtle changes. Um, that's right, I've, I've moved the, uh, I've taken the cabbages from this plot here and I've planted out the very late brassicas and moved the netting over to that corner. Um, still a few more jobs to do and mostly it's today it's going to be hitting this sweet corn and I might give it a bit of feed as well. It doesn't really need it, but um, it's all, you know, uh, sweet corn is one of those crops that you really almost can't give enough food to. Um, conversely, there's an awful lot of food already here with that horse manure, but I'm going to give it a little bit of granular fertiliser just to give it a boost and really get it taking off. Um, over there, is the garlic which I planted last October so that's about nine months to the day almost um, it's very slow to get started but now it's really you know, ready to pick or ready to lift and we'll go through that um, you don't want to be just pulling the garlic out you need to be lifting it out otherwise you can damage the roots and it won't store so well but we'll go into that in a moment so anyway without further ado let's uh, crack on with something I think we'll start with the garlic okay so garlic are relatively easy to grow in the UK because we have quite cool winters um, garlic needs temperatures of below 10 degrees centigrade on average for a month to promote the dividing of the of the cloves uh, and, and it's really easy to plant we'll probably get around to it in October November time you'll see but all I've done over the years um, from my initial seed garlic, uh, like a bulb I bought from the garden centre, um, planted the individual cloves, they grew, I've saved the biggest, best ones for the next season, and so on and so on. So anyway, without further ado, um, they've had their cold winter, they should have cloved up, um, you know, divided up, and it's time to lift them out, and I think we'll take out these uh, shallots as well, just to give us a bit of space here now, we can plant something else here. I'm going to put cucumbers here. Anyway, come over and let's have a look at this lifting them out and I'll show you how it's done. Okay, so to prevent any damage to the root plate, I'm just going to stick our fork in right underneath it and lift it out. Normally, you do this on a very dry day and the soil would fall away very easily. But we don't have the luxury of that this year. And right, there we go, look. There's our first garlic lifted of the season. Just get the soil off. Normally this would fall off easily, as I say. And there's a the garlic. Look that. What we can do is just leave those to dry a little bit on the ground like that as we lift up the rest. And I'll just uh, crack on and do the rest now nice and quickly. But it's already starting to warm up. So, you know, sun's out, tum's out. So. Right, so let me crack on with this. Last garlic out. Um, there's a couple which aren't good. One that just hasn't really cloned for some reason. Maybe a genetic thing. 
maybe a disease it seems a bit soft so I'll have a look in a moment and there's one which I think has just gone a bit too far and it's started to split so it might still be right to eat immediately we'll soon find out let's have a look at those two okay I think this one is just simply a case of being left a bit too long and the uh, outer skin has begun to you know degrade and rot so that one we'll have a proper look at at home but I think that one we might be able to save and uh, actually use that one let's put that to one side for the time being on the floor Bunk. and this one seems soft in the middle I don't quite know why it could be a disease the old leak leaf minor beetle maybe let's have a look I don't see any telltale signs here. You normally see you normally see the little brown um, marks. There's a bit of a brown bit there. Now that may be something nasty. I don't think it's going to be any good to eat this one, so let's rip it apart and have a look. Pop it up. I can't really explain why that one's not done anything. Maybe that's just genetically not good maybe i clipped it there with the uh with the hoe or something it's got a bit of rot there but it just hasn't formed anything look this hasn't managed to form anything all the others have done fine but this one this one not so if you know comment below but i have no idea why that one has failed there's no leak leaf minor beetle minor fly in there Anyway, there you go, mystery. Just for some reason, it didn't want to play ball. It smells nice though. The one thing about um, homegrown garlic is it will always be much, much nicer than anything you can buy in a shop. I promise you that. But that one is no good. Let's have a look at the others. Okay, so these are our garlic. I've peeled off the outer leaves from this one just to show you how they look like when they're prepared. Um, ordinarily, what I'd do is wait for a really dry couple of weeks, which you might normally have in July, um, and I would lay them out, let them dry off a little bit, and then take the outer leaves off. And I'll do that with the rest of these in a moment. But for demonstration purposes, here's all we do. We just find the outer leaf, peel it off gently and so it's much easier when it's a bit drier and we peel it back might just take another one make it a bit easier for ourselves so what you do as you peel this back look you reveal the nice clean white um, bulb and then as that dries out further in my spare room at home in a nice ventilated uh, sunny room that will basically turn to paper then you'll get the classic sort of garlic you'll see in the shop but there you go try not to make it too mucky with your mucky fingers so that's that's how we get our garlic nice and white Let's move on now to hitting the sweet corn. Okay, first things first, I hope you can actually hear me with the noise of radios and stuff going. Um, a little bit annoying, but there you go, what can you do? Um, now, hitting the sweet corn. Um, this is actually doing really well, this sweet corn. We've had a lot of rain, unusually, for this time of year. And uh, with all the horse manure on there it's just going absolutely gangbusters but I am going to give it a little bit of this granular fertilizer which is a 20 10 10 um, fertilizer that's 20 parts um, per 100 20 percent um, nitrogen which will just give us another little boost now it's just above knee high we'll give it another boost to get it up and with all this water it should be perfect so why do we hill sweet corn well, there's several reasons uh, first of all, it suppresses the annual weeds that are in the row 
I've been up through the middle of the rows with the single tying cultivator and I just roughed it up to give us something to hill with because it's quite damp. Um, so we, we'll hear that up. That will cover the annual weed uh, in the middle of the rows. It won't really harm um, our beans that are there because most of them have been eaten by snails. The remaining ones are big enough to take a bit of hilling. The small annual seedlings will get buried out though and, and crowded out. Um, it also gives us a chance to incorporate this fertiliser without having to get too near the plant because it is quite strong and um, although sweet corn can take almost as much nitrogen as you can give it you know it is possible to burn it as well I've done that in the past if you get fertiliser in the little crevices in, you know, with the leaves wrapped around um, so yeah another good reason another good reason is it also helps it produce um, its support roots that they come out and it, it you know makes it stronger so it doesn't get blown over in the wind um, so there's you know, at least three good reasons for doing it um, it's a tip I saw on uh, the row by row garden show in, uh, in on a Facebook group in, uh, and on YouTube very good if you're uh, especially if you're growing in the deep south of the United States a very useful resource anyway we're not in the deep south of the United States we're in the deep south of London so uh, we don't have quite the same problems and we are only going to get one shot of sweet corn in a season so let's give it the best shot we can. Just use the draw hoe to draw this new soil up between the rows. And we'll do this maybe two or three times between now and September. There's the corn all hilled up. Now then, I've asked a few people about these pups, things like this, at the bottom. Now it seems about 50% of the people say take them off, and 50% of the people say it doesn't make any difference. I'm assuming if you've got a big commercial field, you obviously wouldn't bother taking them off. But I'm thinking that maybe they do take energy from the main plant. Last week I took them all off and they've come back. So I'm wondering if it's really worth doing. If you have an opinion, please comment. I'd love to know your real life experience. They never seem to produce any cobs. So uh, I think they're pretty much surplus to requirements. But let me know if you know better. I'm just gonna go through and take these off again and hope they don't come back. If they do come back, I think I'll leave them. Okay, well that pretty much concludes hitting sweet corn and harvesting garlic. Um, hitting sweet corn was a little bit more physical than I expected. Uh, almost gave me a blister on my delicate little hands. Anyway, it's done now. Um, I was just speaking to Peter, a sweet corn expert. Um, he didn't want to be on camera saying that my sweet corn was better than his this year. Understandable. Um, but he, um, he did come up with a good idea about the sweet corn pups. He'd heard the same as me. That 50% um, you know, of people say leave them on, 
50% of people say take them off. And he came up with a good idea, because um, he's a clever man, that I could actually experiment and do half the rows, you know, alternate rows, leave them on, alternate rows, take them off. So I think that's what we'll do. Um, anyway, that more or less concludes the video. If you want to keep watching, there's some bonus footage on the end from last week of me putting out the broad beans and doing that. Um, yeah, thanks for watching. If you watch this far, maybe you could consider subscribing. Otherwise, have a lovely evening, a lovely weekend, and uh, a lovely rest of the month. Maybe now the sun's here, although I wouldn't hold your breath. Okay, and before we get in the time machine and go back to last week when I'm taking out the broad beans over there, I thought I should uh, show you what I'm doing with this garlic bed. Um, initially, around the edge, I'm going to put some cucumbers. These are Cornichon de, de Paris. Again, easy for you to say. Um, yeah, so they're going to be like little tiny pickling cucumbers. You can, eat, you can let them go big and eat them as a cucumber, um, but they're really um, bred to be a very small pickling cucumber. They're very nice, very crunchy. So anyway, just use this rebar fence thing. And I'm just uh, making a hole in the hand, and popping them in. And hopefully they'll be safe from slugs and snails. I have used, um, an organic uh, slug pellet thing. Um, I don't really like using slug pellets. They're not great for uh, the environment, but these are um, the best ones, I think. These, these just these are aluminium sulfate or something. Um, so they're not as deadly to other wildlife. Um, I still probably wouldn't eat them myself, but uh, they don't do any real harm to the environment, so to speak. Not like the traditional slug pellets that kill all the hedgehogs and everything else. Um, and we've had such a bad run of slugs and snails this year that I've really got to take some precaution because I'm going to have, I've lost most of my cabbages already and uh, I don't want to lose these really. Anyway, right, and now I think in future we'll put some beetroot or something in here. I did put beetroot in here last year. Um, but we may have to stick them in again. Anyway, I'll let you see uh, footage from last week. It's high time for these broad beans to make room for something else. They've been here since last October, November, something like that. They're overwintered. They're making a very nice crop of broad beans. But they're way past their best. And it's time for them to come out. So they make a very decent sort of bean. It's very nice to very nice to uh, boil up and have with your dinner. And they're about as big as you want them now, these broad beans. And crack them open. A nice big chunky bean in there. And uh, they're boiled up lovely. And you can eat them raw like this, or you can boil them up. They're nice and soft. When they're this big, they make a thicker outer skin, which you can take off if you really want to. But it's perfectly fine to eat. I like it with a bit of mashed potato, a bit of butter. Very nice to eat. So this is the very last of them now. I've had pounds and pounds and kilos and kilos off of here. And there's more than enough to feed me, and my friends and family for some time. 